So these dough-like applicators are called air cushion puff and supposedly these are made to give you a flawless glass skin kind of finish to your makeup. Let's try them out. I got these smooth dough puffs from YesStyle. I got them like six months back and haven't even tried them yet. But then these types of applicators are literally everywhere on Amazon, Misho and more. I'm gonna start with this pot concealer from Inside Cosmetics in the shade NC5 Medium Yellow. I'm literally struggling to put this concealer down because of the insane shade match. I'm addicted to this concealer. It's my skin color in a pot and it's also very lightweight and airy on the skin. So throughout the day, I don't even feel like, you know, there's something on my face. Today, all the products that we are gonna use have low coverage and ultra thin consistency. I really wanna put the air cushion puff to the test instead of applying the concealer with my fingers and then blending it out with the puff, like, you know, how we usually do with a beauty sponge. What I did was I dug the concealer with the puff and blended it out on my face. This air cushion puff is from Pony Effect. This is not my first time trying out an air cushion puff. I've tried these ones from Miniso too, but I really didn't like them. I didn't like the finish at all. You know what it's like with some, you know, cheap beauty blenders? They feel very hard on the skin and they don't blend the cream products properly. Or sometimes it's the complete opposite. Cheap beauty blenders, uh, sometimes they absorb a lot of product from the face. Just like that, the Miniso ones seemed thinner and not puffy or airy. Because of how flat the puff was when I blend, it felt very harsh on my skin. The Pony ones seem denser and soft compared to Miniso ones. So I think the key is to find something denser, thicker, softer and more dough-like. While blending the concealer, I noticed how it kind of pasted the product to my skin and that in turn gave me full coverage kind of a finish even though I used the lightest coverage concealer. It took a very, very little amount of time to complete my makeup. But then my hands did feel uncomfortable holding the puff. My skin looked porcelain smooth and glass-like, but when I took a closer look in the mirror, I felt like my makeup didn't blend properly. It definitely looks like I've used a full coverage product. 9 out of 10 for the finish, but I can't deny the fact that I kind of miss the soft focus finish that we get from Beauty Sponge. Beauty sponges are known to give you a softer, fully blended, flawless finish, but those kind of sponges also absorb a lot of product. Air cushion puffs, on the other hand, give you a full coverage finish, but it lacks that soft focus finish. So initially, I only wanted to blend the concealer and skin tint with the air cushion puff. And for the rest, I thought I would use my regular Mars Cosmetics Wonder Blender sponge. But I really wanted to know how the puff would work with pigmented products like contour or blush. So here's what I did. I used my Holy Grail contour stick from Blue Heaven. Their contour formula is already creamy and easily blendable. And the puff too diffused it quite nicely. It didn't pick up any product nor did the finish was patchy. I am a lazy girl, okay? I sweat the small stuff. The fact that I don't have to dampen the sponge made me happy. To set this base, I used a cute little compact powder from Inside Cosmetics. It's their Flawless Finish Setting Powder in MN35. Such a cute and convenient packaging, bro. I love this packaging. The Cushion Puff really worked with uh, powder-based products as well, which I thought was interesting. I personally don't like to use beauty sponge to bake or set my base with powder. It's something you will never catch me doing. I can't recall the last time when that technique ever worked on my dry skin. Damp beauty sponge and powder, in my opinion, is like the worst combination for my skin because it had always left my base looking patchy and weird. Now that didn't happen with the cushion puff. I think it's because it, it's not damp. My powder settled beautifully on top of my creamy concealer and the skin tint. Something you will also catch me doing is using cream blush on top of setting powder. Nine out of 10 times, I'm very conservative with my blush color and its intensity. So if your blush is 
painfully pale and low on pigment then use it on top of your powder or else you know your powder will take away any remaining pigment from your blush it's a very summer appropriate clean girl minimal makeup so i used a regular lash separating mascara to bind everything together so while i was busy finishing the rest of the makeup i noticed the concealer settled on my fine lines and creases which doesn't happen when i use my fingers or sponge as soon as you set your cream products with powder at least for me my base doesn't crease for one hour or so but even after setting my face with powder the concealer started creasing immediately and it was very much noticeable this is the only con i have with using cushion puffs uh, for the lips i used a new lip tint i got from etude house it's a high opacity glossy lip tint called glass rouge tint in the shade pp501 evening mauve literally a dark mauve glossy lip color with that i am satisfied with the look so did it feel like i was hitting my face with a dough yes it did did my hands feel uncomfortable holding the puff yes ma'am was it worth it absolutely so what do you think about the air cushion puff will you try something like this instead of a regular beauty sponge tell me in the comment section down below i'll see you when i see you next bye guys